Well, welcome, students. Uh, I'm sure you're in for a morning of great entertainment. And, uh, don't fall asleep. Yeah. Don't fall asleep. But maybe, uh, maybe you'll learn something. I hope we could uh, show you something that you have been exposed to. Uh, a lot of our job is, probably 80% of our job is mandated either by state or federal government, so we do have a little bit of say-so of what happens in the county. Our, our charge for the county as commissioners is public health, public works, and public safety. So obviously we're in charge of the, of the county health department, uh, road and bridge, uh, EMS and fire, but from that point on, uh, it's mainly what trickles down from Topeka or Washington, D.C. So I do hope you learned something today. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Hopefully we can answer them or we'll find somebody that can. So welcome. Well, I wouldn't really want to look at but I did find you struck. <laughs> This has got to be This has got eighteen thousand pounds for our max. And there's plenty of room in your budget for that. For this. Yeah, we have two hundred and forty-nine thousand two hundred and fifty dollars in the equipment fund. So it's about half the cost of what mm -hmm. what it could be like part of the thing that off part of the <laughs> See, this one's the one I've told you was cheaper than there. Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't have the money in their equipment fund to pay for it. What were they doing? They're transferring the money around and, and coming into the balance of the fund. Transferring that to leave the balance of 40000 with the radio reporting. So do you want Wes to do the work? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, 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 I would be fine. No, I'd be fine. You're going to move your the snowplow stuff off your old truck on the loose truck 
I would like to get rid of that pile. Uh, it's a heavy pile, but I, I need to go get a pile. I did not get a price on another pile. And we don't need to do that. I mean, that's not something that needs to be done today. I mean, so I'll give us thinking and find that. Because I'd like to go to a reversible pile, which would be more beneficial. I mean, when we're cleaning up intersections and whatnot. And get away from that heavy pile. I mean, how much does the pile usually cost? It was like ninety five hundred bucks on that on the last bit we got. I it was it probably it or probably eleven thousand something. It probably be ten to eleven thousand dollars. And part of that stuff earlier right here on this second part of that deal was to mount, and he would probably mount that big pile too. If we I think it's something that'll work for us. I mean, it'll, 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 that truck should last us 12 to 15 years. Probably not something I'm going to work with. have to deal with it then. I'll find one more than one on me. Really? Well, not on this side of the table, isn't it? I would have never put that out. Felt it hurt. International truck from Southwest truck and that day west we the work for $68,381. I second that motion. Motion and second to purchase the 2004 International truck from Southwest truck and we'll have the west do the work about the bed. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Phil, you might explain to the students what your job is and, um, <clears throat> oh, for example, like uh, bridge inspections, what it's, here again, is another mandated thing that you could use. My job through the supervisor is to be accountable to the county commissioners here. We maintain 250 miles of roads for which uh, 210 of it is asphalt, the other 40 is ground up asphalt, recycled asphalt as we call it. It has to be drug. So, but anyway, we have 200 or 110 bridge structures. That is bridges that have to be inspected. Inspected. This is mandated by the federal government because of the bridge collapse back in Minneapolis when that was all a few years ago. So every two years, all our bridges are inspected by inspector by uh, engineering company. They come in and do the inspections. It costs us approximately hundred dollars per bridge to do this. Um, well, we have always done bridge inspections. I don't, don't think just because of the collapse. That's where we went from. Just because of that, we had always done the bridge inspections to begin with. So, but we see all probably we do maintenance on probably about a quarter of a month or a quarter of our asphalt roads every year. We have a bridge, we have a budget of $2.3 million this year. Um, it, it fluctuates from year to year on the amount of valuation. They know what these guys want to do with the uh, mill levy. Um, we have 15 employees. We take care of the snow and ice when in clement weather. We uh, maintain about 1,200 signs. That's anywhere from the stop signs to 911 signs out in the country. Um, anybody got any questions? Sure. Uh, when was your last inspection? This year. Last no, last year, last in uh, October last year they did the inspection. Um, <coughs> we got the books back here a couple months ago, but everything was in good shape. We had a few maintenance problems or minor maintenance things we have to do, like um, sometimes on some of the dirt roads, they will, the uh, township operator will hook the bridge deck, which some of them are steel deck, so we'll have to go in there and cut that out and repair that and, and replace the, the bridge, steel bridge plank in it and then go from there. You might tell on what the definition of a bridge? A, mean, a, so bridge a bridge structure is considered 20 foot and over. Anything less than that, is not considered a bridge. 
Stafford County maintains anything that has a square opening of 25 square feet in a bottom line. I'm sure some of this is probably a little, probably a little vague to you, but if it's not very big, it's the township's responsibility, but if it's over 25 square feet, it is ours, and we have approximately about 100, another 150 structures of those, anywhere from a pipe to a cement box to a few little wooden boxes. We have anywhere, we have wood box, we have wood structures, we have steel structures, and we have cement structures. Anybody else? Okay, you're off the hook. <laughs>
plus we're going to have lines of people that come in on the noon. Because that's the main thing. People are going to want to know what's it going to cost. So, and then we're going to have to explain to them. Yeah, I'll probably put a link out on our website so I can direct them out to our link. And that will help them navigate and I'll do lots of publicity about it. They did give us a list. We have approximately about 3,000 pieces of mail that would need to be mailed here. So they did give counties that information if you want to look at mailing. But like I said, I'm, I'm going to take a wait and see approach before I decide to mail. It's not my budget to, to start mailing. And so that'd be another cost. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. You guys have any questions?
last night, we talked about the server with the phones. We were, we also told you last time we were kind of looking at winning our options with the, with the water support pit trucks. Um, we have found a, uh, another 510 truck just like what we have that is coming up for auction. She didn't know. Okay. Jerry called me last night after he got home and said that it's been moved to next Wednesday. Okay. It's another, it's a 91 model um, A2 turbo. Another one of the five tons. Um, so it looks like it's a pretty decent truck. He just bought one, and this one's out of, actually out of the McConnell Air Force Base. Um, the one he had bought here just last week, he bought it for 8900 um, He was going to kind of do some watching. We talked last night about, you know, we can, we can probably do this for you, but uh, kind of put my cap on what we wanted to spend on a truck, which a, a cap was over no more over $10,000. So you're wanting approval for a cap of ten thousand dollars? On the truck, yes. <coughs> no more than not to exceed ten thousand dollars. That requires a motion for just consensus. That's fine. Okay. Uh, our radio project is uh, progressing nicely. Uh, April 28th and 29th, Doug? Yeah, from the tower camp. It's supposed to be here. Be down here at the county shop and the tower project get it started.
Yeah, it did. <laughs> well, here's pretty close to you. But like I said, everybody's doing responses, receptive to everything, and there's really been no major problems with it. So it's just told me to be patient, work with us, and put them a bit more. So, uh, back on the subject of a tanker, the uh, truck that's at my station, which is a uh, It is a poor service truck. And as much as I don't want to say this, I put it on borrowed time with that truck. The uh, pump, the tank, toolbox is all fine. It was one of the we retrofitted after we had burnt one truck that we burned it down. Stabber we had this one refurbished. <coughs> the old drill truck sure pure age pretty bad, you know, speed wise, it takes quite a bit to get three thousand gallons of water to move in that old truck. I kinda look around at that. It's more of maybe putting a different truck under that tank and that pump and toolbox. But I just haven't found anything that looks appealing to us right now. So, but I am doing some, some checking before any decision can be made. It will come back to you as a group and clear our options. So, just to keep you in the loop on that. Anything else? Just a quick update on, on the fire responses since March 21st to now. Six incident cars coming across my list. So that's our number right now. We're setting on for the month. It's 26 volts. So, and some of them have been 12-hour and 12-hour. One of them is a 12-hour and the other one is an all-night. And we got some real long ones. We are starting to receive our bills in from the big 14-hour car. Um, we will put that all together with a couple of different options and bring that back to you. Um, obviously, since uh, Davin has a uh, kind of been fed the bulls in terms of the last year, and he's uh, really stepped up to the plate with, uh, with what he's done. And we're very, very impressed, uh, especially the last four months with all the additional tasks that we've thrown out. <coughs> in the last couple of weeks, it's not been any better. There's a quick little update. Very willing to take on any additional tasks that we're asking, and sometimes it's spur of the moment. We pay hey, any to take care of this. <coughs> okay. Any other questions? We uh, chose him to do this, and him kind of taking all three disciplines at the very, very well.
John. Jerry Sanders is from Stafford, and we have another one from the northern part of the county. <coughs> and we do it much like uh, the commissioners do. We're, we're a panel and a council. We make our decision together. We vote on it. If it doesn't go, we, you know, we will voice our opinions on it. We don't like it. We do a voting system, basically, is what we do, like city council and commissioners. Um, that's on that side. We work with MISTI because we, the three departments share an employee, which is Dad in here. Uh, she's head of the EMS department and paramedic, and Doug Brown, everybody knows from over there, is the emergency management. And so he works for three entity department heads, is basically three departments, you can't say department heads, because one department head and it has like six of us. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's actually worked out pretty well. We've had a few rough starts and everything, but everything's going pretty good this way, we found out. What more than experience? Never at all. And every now and then we come. Ask the power to be. <laughs> <laughs> I think as cooperation the system is so much better. Yeah. I think cooperation. Working with all, all, all the departments who want it and having all of the departments that are on the same page, it makes things to go a lot easier. And really, like you said, like Commissioner said, we're so, everyone here is cross trained. We do a little bit of everything. Basically, it's the emergency field for the county is what we all do here. We have fire in us, uh, law enforcement, all represent. <coughs> In the same thing. Do you have any questions for us? The government Which class, how old are you guys? Are you 17, 18? Seniors? You're seniors. Seniors. <laughs> have the EMT class that I put on every year. Oh, you're going to say that. The EMT class every year from January to March or May, if you have any interest within the EMT, come and see us. Yeah. Yeah. It's only five months in your life. You know, it's really not bad. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Then the second 
meeting we're going to have is a, a set up web for training. And that will be possibly Doug, Marilyn, myself, and possibly the We'll, we'll do a web with, with pictometry again. Mm -hmm. After that's set up, then what we're going to do is probably need this room to do a on-site training with pictometry. And that's what we would like to have everybody do that was here today. We would like to have, you know, I guess the department was here. But we, need, we would need everybody in the cities, even I'll invite the cities, and this is when we want to get them their passwords, then those entities can see the commentary at that point. Okay? So that's the update right now. And I do have a couple bills that I'll go over the But but what they did is they broke it down in that three year plan. And then I'll go over that with me and then see how, how you guys have that all set up then. So as of right now, uh Stafford City is actually they've already paid for those for the year. If you, as you remember, each city is going to use this is going to pay a fee. If they don't want to use it, and then they want a map, it's going to cost them that way. The staff of the city are paid, so they're going to have to So that's where we're at on the calendar. You might tell them what to tell them. Okay, <laughs> I was actually going to do that up there. That's fine. Just to whip the pictometry. What pictometry is. <laughs> what pictometry is, is if you guys ever, you guys look on Google, I think. Uh, pictometry is somewhat like that, but most photography, when you look down, it, you see the top of the building, right? Except for on Google, you can see the front view or the street view when you go to the satellite. What pictometry does is it lets it not only lets you look at the front of the building, but it looks it lets you look at each side of the building, front and back. <clears throat> it lets you measure. It lets you do all kinds of fun things that the, we hope the law enforcement will use. Uh, we will use it in the appraiser's office, uh, but it's an update photo uh, to where you can see all the sides of, of every building. So it's, it's a very good piece we can use. And what we wanted to do is have all the cities use it uh, for their infrastructure uh, so they know where the manholes are, if they want to know where all their uh, water lines are, all that kind of stuff. They can make a layer on it. We can go more over that up there a little more if you want to. But just to let you guys know, that IT people are needed out here in western Kansas. If, you, if you're interested, it's not a bad living and you can, you can do okay, but IT people are, are very important, as you're going to see here in a little bit. So, Okay? All right. We actually had airplanes fly over and take pictures here a month ago. Mm -hmm. and that's where we get these from. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for saying. Thanks for saying. Okay. The next thing is, is this is kind of different. You guys, this is a, you know how we have Randy for our IT person for the computers and so forth. Um, we don't have an IT person or company for the GIS, and at times we run into some problems and we kind of fumble and try to find some information. This one company, AOC GIS. Uh, they put together, they talked to me at the KAC meeting, and they asked what counties would need that don't want a contractor. What that means is I don't want a contractor to come in here and do our GIS. But what we need is we, we could use somebody to do troubleshooting for us. If you don't have an agreement with them, most of these companies charge $200 an hour. I have found that a Kimball mapping would charge $150 an hour. Uh, they put it together a little contract for us. It, it narrows it down to $100 an hour over a, a year period, which would be 25, I mean, which would give us 25 hours or $2,500 for one year contract. I'm not ready to sign it yet. I just want to bring it to you and let you think about it. Uh, there's a couple things we could actually use them for. Uh, every so often we get, we get new soil types to where the state where the NRCS puts using some soil types and generates new ones, and we have some new ones we need to download our our old layer of the soils with the new layer of soils, and then we can highlight those accordingly to what soils are new and what ones are now obsolete. 
uh, the only disadvantage is nobody can stay in time to do it. And a lot of counties don't know how to do it. This company doesn't know how to do it. They've helped some other counties. Um, right now, we're trying to get a meeting with, and it would be in Barton County, to where we could get all the auto desk people there and see if they can figure it out first. So all the counties can do it the same way. If they can't figure it out, then I'll bring this back to you and, and pursue it a little more. And how many soil types do we have in the county? 32 <coughs> soil types. I always thought dirt was dirt. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just putting that in here <laughs> now that we may have to do something like this. Okay? Okay, we're going to certify, we talked earlier, uh, we're going to certify the values. I'm, gonna, I'm shooting for April 29th to do the real estate, to certify the real estate to the county clerk. Typically, we do that in June. It has to be done by statute of June 15th. So we're going to do that early to give you guys time because you, you know we've lost a lot of valuation in oil. Um, probably 60% of our valuation will be gone in the oil this year. So... Uh, that gives you a little more time to do your magic. Uh, the long gas, we will certify around the 18th, and the personal property, we're certified about the 18th. That'll still be about four weeks early. Four weeks of our total budget is a little. Third? I bet I, I, I don't know. No, not on the budget. If you remember, the, we have the evaluation though in, in the Ag Act. That's the question we can answer in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get a little closer on that. So that's the heads up for you. Um, zoning hearing, we have a conditional use on a cell tower in this building right here on May 11th at 7 p.m. We mail out and hand deliver. <laughs> <laughs> All notices to the property owners involved <laughs> today and, uh, and to the city. So, so that will be coming up May 11th here. Um, and then uh, one other thing uh, I'd like to talk about is the NRP, the Native Group Evaluation, the tax rebate. I'll give this to you guys. This is our brochure. And you're going to see the date on the front real quick there. Uh, we renew this December 31st, 2015. What I need to start doing, and I think I'll do it when we have the meeting with the cities and so forth, because we need to see if they want to have an interlocal agreement. If you guys want to renew it, that's the time. If you don't, you just say we're not going to renew this tax rebate anymore. Uh, if we want to modify it, anyway, this is a good time to do it. Uh, but. This is something we have to start working on to have it in place for January 1st, 2016. What I'll do later, I'll get numbers on how many projects we've used uh, each year um, to give you an idea on, on how often it is used. Um, we can talk about that a little bit. I think it's helped. I want to, I want to thank it has. I want to thank it has. Uh, you know, the main reason we put this in is, you know, because uh, with our valuations, we, we've had high mill levels on this up off the like construction. That's kind of what generated this, this whole thing. So, you know, so that's, that's coming up in the, in the way you know, so, so. I think what we've done in the past, and this will be our fourth time to update it, is I think the commission kind of decides what you guys want to do first with the with this, with the neighborhood evaluation, and then I give that decision to the cities and to the schools. Because they always ask, well, what's the county want to do? And so if you guys already know what you want to do when we talk about it, then that will help. Do um, you know of any other counties that have had the program like this and what they did after they extended it? Did they extend it or did they modify it or how did they modify it? Both, all the above. Um, some counties, and I can mean, tell you, Pawnee County was on a five-year plan uh, for, for since 2004, and they actually went to a seven-year plan this year. Right. Or the, the same plan as a similar to this? Uh, 
Uh, pretty similar now. Uh, they kind of based it off of ours. Um, they do have two plans now. Darn it. <laughs> Uh, that we keep up with. The reason being is the, the smaller communities, like say as an example, uh, Larner wasn't as quite as aggressive as the smaller communities. That gave the smaller communities the benefit of, of competition. Uh, we wouldn't really have this here. You know, I think all three towns, all the towns are, are comparative and so forth. Uh, that's why we typically have kept one, one plan, I think. Uh, what you could look at is if the county wanted to go to, typically what they look at is the, um, the, the, the dollar amount, if you want to lower that or raise it, of the $20,000 threshold, the number of years or percent. Um, we are one of the only still to this day that has a disaster plan in place. And we picked that up when, we, when, it, when that happened during the we added that to our new $50 budget. Here too. So that'd be something we can do one of day. If you want to get more aggressive, that's that's how we can do it. If you want to go 10 years, um, or if you like it, I use the numbers and then if we like it, then I think we have a pretty good plan actually. And then we gotta get down step on it. So, so I'll bring that to you guys and just give you something to think about that. Maybe it is, but that's coming too. So, all right. That's all I have. Thank you. So the tower has started completion, of, or started construction of it. I can tell it is the forty nine years. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Three hours. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you guys remember, you know that's gonna that's gonna be the that big dead zone up there uh, on the highway going from Stafford to Ellenwood, that there should be a dead spot in there because of that tower. And then the one going out here is going to have here, like in here. And then, I mean, yeah. I, can, oh, I mean, I don't do very good in here. Not in here, but I mean, you get kind of north of Olive Valley Church, it kind of cuts out. Well, one of the very bad cuts out. Yeah, but I don't know if either one of those towers will help with that. I would say the one of, I think the one way up, North will help in that. Oh, so mm -hmm. K-19 to County Line, you're almost straight in. It's mm -hmm. pretty bad. I think it will both help with that. Okay. It's bad between here and Sterling and here and Lyons, too. And that would be made up. Okay. And you need to have to be there. No, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> if you have any other concerns, we'll check them in the room. Okay. Very good. That's all I have. You guys have any? Okay, thanks a lot. See you. Okay, both of us see you guys later. I don't have anything. Oh, you're I, I might mention that we have a printer again for doing passport photos and we still carry photos. Our printer broke and we had to get a new one, so you might add that so everybody. Can we take better pictures of the old one? You broke it out for that printer. <laughs> I'm with Central Kansas Community Corrections. I'm the director. And Community Corrections is a, a program for adult felony offenders um, to serve a term on supervision um, as ordered by the court rather than going to prison. So if you imagine uh, juvenile services is also here, so they, they deal with the juveniles. And then there's court services, which is just traditional probation. They do mainly uh, <clears throat> supervision of people that have misdemeanors or maybe lower level felonies. And Community Corrections is an intensive supervision program. We supervise people that would otherwise go to prison if, if we didn't have this program. So um, we are pretty, um, our outcomes are pretty successful. We have uh, requirements um, by the court. They, people come in, they obey the laws, they have a job, they maintain contact with us, and they do maybe community service work, they pay their, pay their costs. Um, also we manage 
uh, maybe some of the behaviors that got them on supervision, if you uh, uh, made some mistakes in their life, maybe uh, got into drugs, alcohol, uh, those typically are the, are the main things that we have to deal with uh, to try to influence change so that they're successful and they uh, are on, a, you know, lead productive lives and all that good stuff. So I'd be happy to answer any questions or uh, if you've got any hints on what I could do better to serve um, anyone that you know that might have been on supervision, um, I'm always up for that information too. So. So what's the difference between supervision and uh, probation? So court services probation, they would, they would, uh, they supervise them probably a little bit less than us. They have less requirements by the uh, court for us. Uh, mainly by the time somebody comes on and they've got either a higher criminal history or they've gotten into maybe bigger problems that have been put on their, on their supervision. Like I said, usually there's a and we deal with adults, so it could be a whole lifetime of either addiction or uh, things that maybe uh, were acceptable in the home as far as criminal behavior, then it's our job to try to teach them skills to do other things other than what they've done before. So, um, and sometimes that goes with a negative consequence too. You know, we have, I, do, I firmly believe that there needs to be a mix of accountability with intervention. So, you know, if you've read the paper, you probably already have, and you know those names that go in and out of jail. Um, you know, those are some people that have maybe gotten into a habit of making some bad choices in their life. Um, but the problem is, we can't just lock everybody up, because they come back. And um, so we need to figure out how to live in the same community and for them to start making better choices um, so that they can uh, be productive and our, therefore our full outcome is that our streets are a little bit, our communities are safer, our streets are safer. So um, that's our job is to not give up on people, um, but at the same time if their uh, behaviors become too big or continue to make uh, bad choices, that there's a place for them, and that's prison. And uh, unfortunately, that's their their reality. And hopefully, when they get out, they kind of learn their lesson or get some skills. And in, in prison, there's not a lot that's learned in prison, but they do have some programming trying to to help correct that. And uh, then they would come back out, and usually, most of them are out on parole, which is post supervision after prison. So, yeah. Any other questions? Good. All right. And I have two things for you today. I finally had somebody for an appointment for Stafford County, oh, really? and I forgot to bring her, oh, I haven't got her paper back, our paperwork yet, but um, if you're familiar with Mary Holloway mm -hmm. from uh, Stafford, so she, or Stafford, so she's uh, have confirmed again this morning okay. that she would be willing to serve on our advisory board and um, and so I would ask for an appointment from you guys for that. And, and um, today uh, I'm here before you asking for the approval to submit our fiscal year 2016 comprehensive plan. And again that is our uh, grant document that we submit to the Kansas Department of Corrections for the purpose of our next year's funding. And it sets out the goals and objectives of what we'll do next year, but it also kind of gives a recap of what we've got going on in our program. Um, we also document on the first part, or after the blue change, uh, we have the outcomes from the last completed fiscal year, which is 2014 where we had 110 offenders that were closed by the court, and 78% of those folks uh, were closed without going to prison, and 22% of those offenders were uh, revoked to the Kansas prison system. Um, the next page, just kind of in a snapshot, I still like to really focus on the successful completers, and, um, and it seems like the experiment is still showing the same outcomes, and it's just showing that people that have a stable employment, stable residence, 
uh, have managed their drug and alcohol, they've got some recovery under their belt, managing their mental health needs, um, and it supports an overall better attitude or the people that are most likely to successfully complete our program. And so we're still doing a lot of skill building to uh, boost those successful completers. You know, sometimes, like I was saying earlier, you have people that come on and it's been a lifetime of um, maybe bad choices or not very good influences. And so um, we have to do a lot of different things called, called cognitive restructuring, really retraining the brain to figure out, um, see the big picture. You know, we were just chatting on the way here. You know, a lot of people don't do something with the ex expectation of getting caught. You know, I didn't, you know, if I sped to work, allegedly, maybe, then I, I wouldn't think about that I was going to get the ticket. You know, I would think I'm going to get there faster, I'm going to, uh, you know, get away with my deviant behavior, uh -huh, you know. And, but, you know, we, so we, we need to help them stop, think, play out the ticket. What happens if, what happens if, you know, for me, my example, what happens if, you know, a deer runs across the road? Am I going to give myself enough time to stop? Am I, you know, do I have kids in the car? Am I going to hurt somebody else if I wasn't in an accident? Um, and those things. So we're really trying to just think of uh, playing those out. And, you know, if we have, um, the problem with our classes, I guess it's a problem, they're long. And it's hard to keep people engaged in, 16 weeks of coming to our office two times a week for all of this and engaging homework and not making any other bad choices that get them away from, from completing that. So that's some of our um, challenges this time that we're really working on. Um, you know, the people that have completed it uh, find it a lot of benefit and they're more likely to successfully complete our program. But we're doing, so we're doing more on one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, with our offenders. So. Um, I've tabbed the orange tab, which was just our what needs to be updated with our board membership. And again, I uh, uh, was happy to see that uh, Mary uh, Holloway agreed to, would agree to serve. And so I'll be able to include that in the submission. And then the blue tab just talks about, you know, I talked about our, uh, the way we do our supervision is through evidence-based practices. And it just goes through each of the principles um, and how our office supports each of those uh, principles. And then um, further down it, on the yellow tab, uh, just talks about how um, what our outcomes will be for the next year. And uh, again, our number one priority is that, or that's set by the court, by the state. I'm sorry is that we will maintain a supervision success rate of at least 75%. And again, in FY uh, 2014, we were uh, at 78%. So, and in fiscal year 2015, which is what we're in now, we should be meeting, meeting our goal as well. So we're, we're proud of that. Um, but we still wanna do more to successful, for those successful completers, really um, give them the skills so hopefully they don't come back and um, I think it came back a few years ago, I talked to you about, you know, we have like all new staff and I'm happy to report that we're gaining longevity and, but we're still setting up some outcomes to support how we do business that um, assessment wise, we do them well, we do them with fidelity and on tiling, so I've got some outcomes that support that. <coughs> and um, and uh, this year they actually did things a little differently. They, in the past, we've always had to send our grant and say how much money we were requesting, and then they would tell us what we were going to get. This year, they told us what we were going to get, and we had to write a plan of how we were going to support that. So we were able to hire an additional um, officer. So we now have six officers. We do have uh, one that comes to Stafford County on Wednesdays. Um, I don't think it comes every Wednesday based on the average the population we have in the county, but um, we would be able to uh, come more if need be. So um, the green tab is just a summary of all of the budget documents of how it's uh, played into. So our next year's funding is $468,482. And so we are also applying for uh, a grant 
that will help pay for uh, services, behavioral health services um, that if we were not able to, you know, so the behavioral health services are not neglected because of the challenge of finances. And so you know, we can help pay for some vouchers if um, somebody needed a drug and alcohol assessment but didn't have the money to do it, that we could help pay for that. So um, otherwise things are, things are pretty good at community corrections. And be happy to answer any questions if you have any. So you serve five counties? Correct. Barton, Elsewhere, yeah. Russell, Rice. So with your you know, your goal is 75%, which is 77? Is that what you said? Yeah, mm -hmm. 78. So how do you compare among your, your peers? So you're superior. You are superior. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you can pay me later. Yeah, that's anything else I can point to. I think that is a Tiers. You know, you have those people that are in very rural areas that don't have um, the supports uh, for interventions, so that you have, you know, it's surprising to me when you have, like, Sedgwick County, Johnson County, you know, those are the people where if they would be successful, you know, I mean, it would really change a lot of things, but, you know, they deal with a lot of, we're, we're very lucky where we live. I think you are able to reinvent yourself. You could move, you know, on the other side of town with, with much, without much effort if you needed to, or you know, get out of a bad situation. Also, access to services are, you know, it's not in South County. It's probably less, mm -hmm. but you can get there within 30 minutes. You know, and, uh, either way. And there are some places that they're driving two hours. Right. You know, in right. like Kansas. So um, it's. Yeah, I feel very fortunate and the uh, community sports that we have access to, which helps us. And because we're exhausted. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so you need Mary Holloway appointed to the board of Kansas Community Corrections, correct? Yes. Okay. I'll make a I'll make a motion that we appoint Mary Holloway to the board of Central Kansas Community Corrections. Motion and second to appoint uh, Mary Holloway to the campus. <laughs> Central Kansas. Central Kansas Community Corrections. Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. And then I ask for approval to submit the fiscal year documents. It requires one signature. Correct. I would make a motion that we uh, appoint the chairman to sign the uh, plan for Central Kansas Community Corrections. Sorry. Motion and second to authorize my signature for the plan for the Central Kansas Community Corrections. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. Thank you. And I'll recite the names of the building.
I'm Lori White. I'm, with, I'm Lori White, and I'm the director for uh, the 20th Judicial District Juvenile Services. Um, previous years, we've been under the we're an agency of our own under the Juvenile Justice Authority that no longer exists under our current governorship. He has uh, consolidated us. We are a part of the uh, also the Department of Corrections. We're just the juvenile services piece of it. A couple of years, several years ago, actually, Amy and I worked together. We, were going, we wanted to, or not we wanted to, but there was authority people who wanted us to consolidate as one agency. Amy's agency has never dealt with juveniles. Our agency has never dealt with adults. Um, we kept trying to figure out how we put that all together, but it just, it was separate pools of money at the time. Um, and so we, voiced our opinion that we should say stay separate, and we have stayed separate, and now we are condensed under the Department of Corrections, but still basically two separate entities, then dealing with adults as dealing with juveniles. A couple of different things that we do is that we provide prevention, intervention, and graduated sanctions, which means in the prevention side, we do the cognitive classes like Amy is talking about for people that we see that are just being introduced to the system, and then we also do juvenile intake and assessment. We do do juvenile intake and assessment in Stafford County. Um, anytime that law enforcement it has contact with a youth, could be a baby to up to 18 years of age, uh, they would come through our juvenile intake and assessment process. Um, the goal there is to find a place for them to be that is least restrictive. So you may be returned home, um, they go to a relative placement. If you're a threat to the community or yourself, then you would obviously go to a, a different type of placement. Then we do juvenile intensive supervision probation, which Mike Daniel is here with me. He's the assistant director of our agency, and he handles all the case managers for JISP and case management. The difference in the two is juvenile intensive supervision is a more often contact, but usually the juvenile resides in the community, and, and we are contacting them more. In case management, those are usually juveniles that have more severe crimes, several misdemeanors or felonies, and they are in group home placements generally. Most of our group home placements are in eastern Kansas, so they're usually in eastern Kansas, but we have uh, requirements where we have to travel and see them face to face on a regular basis. And the most severe of case management are those youths that are placed in the juvenile correctional facilities. The juvenile correctional facilities are reserved for those youth who have committed uh, crimes against people um, or severe aggravated crimes, that kind of thing. Um, didn't used to be that way. We used to put a lot of people in the juvenile correctional facility, um, but it, it's a lot steeper uh, requirements to be there at this point in time. Uh, Marissa, uh, Marissa is also with me, Marissa Wood Nancy. She is in charge of our intake and assessment and our prevention piece, supervising those people. So um, I plan to retire in July of 2016. So I brought them along so that they could see the process of what's going on here um, and get used to what they might be doing in the future here. So that's what I did. The piece that I brought before the commissioners today is mainly informational. Um, because we have consolidated with the Department of Corrections, I presume that eventually we will be coming here requiring a signature from all the outlying counties. I've been with juvenile services for 17 years, and I think I've been maybe a couple of times in front of all the outlying um, commissioners. I'm familiar with commissioners in Rice County, because that's where I live, but uh, we, uh, it, it's good for us to get out here and to let you know what services we are providing to your county. Our services are directed by statute, and so uh, juvenile and taking the system is definitely a thing that we provide through statute as well as intensive supervision and case management. Um, our budget this year is down just a little bit. Uh, last year we received $656,000. This year we're receiving $635,000. Our prevention piece it has kind of remained the last couple of years around the 33,000 that's listed there, and but that used to be 103,000. So as the legislature has cut things down, they have cut the prevention piece, which makes it really hard to offer those classes that we were talking about. And then uh, Amy was also talking about services being a little bit different in our area. We don't have access to the things that they have in the city, so we have to be real creative with that uh, 
133,000, and I think that we have done that. Almost everyone in my office is cross-trained so that they can do the functions of anyone else in there, go out and do an intake for us, um, and that serves us best that way. So, do you have any questions for us, or? So when were your 103,000? It, it has been probably about seven years, I would say, so that you can slowly year. came yeah, we so, slowly come down to this. The 33,000, last year they cut it back more than that, but then the legislature gave us a little bit more during their session, so we've been at this 33 for probably three, maybe four years right now. So it's really, we do the best we can with that, and we also do a lot of work with some of our programs, like we have a team court program, and it's um, essentially funded through the United Way out of Barton County. Um, we also get, uh, out of Barton County, we get the youth fees for when the youth is placed in um, services. They have to pay a fee, and that fee is returned to our program. And we use that for our truancy program, we have Project Stay, and we, have, we do do Project Stay here. I do have a couple cases right now. Um, of Project Stay in Stafford County. Intake, Project Stay are voluntary programs too. Anyone in the community can just call us, a parent that's concerned, and say, hey, this is going on with my youth, and we will uh, assess them and try to provide services on a voluntary basis. As long as everybody's in agreement with that, that works great. Yes, no, okay. 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 Okay